I'm here with Albert, general manager of the Florida Mayhem. We are in an interesting position. We're in the yeah. off season where we don't have the game, but we have to move, uh, build a roster, and everyone's moving, despite a couple of teams. So you got to make moves, and you guys started doing that today. Announced your first signing, um, but generally speaking, I think it's quite interesting for general managers to uh, elaborate on their approach because once again, we don't have the game. So we kind of have to figure out, like, how are the people in charge of building these rosters thinking about the best ways to do this? So I guess the first thing that we should talk about is the composition of your general team culture and also language. So do you have a set, like, composition in mind in terms of, like, do you want a hybrid roster? Do you want a Western roster? Do you want a full Korean roster? Have you decided that and or based on which parameters? Um, so every GM has a budget. You get your budget. It's your job to maximize that budget. That's every GM's job. How do you, how do you make the most competitive roster with the resources you're given? Right? So you take a look at your budget and you figure out, oh, how many big ticket players can we go after? How many, you know, you, first, thing, first thing that starts off season, you look at your budget, figure out and then, then the direction comes out, at least for me. Some orgs are different where they might have a direction from the top, like, hey, we want a Western team, or manage, uh, like, upper management really wants a Western team. Upper management really wants a Korean team. You know, whatever it is. Upper management wants to build a mixed roster. For me, there are no restrictions on what type of players I can sign or what nationality players were. That's on me. Um, so my job is just pure, just build the most competitive roster possible. I personally have no preference. I'll do mixed. I've been, you know, I've done mixed roster. I've done Western roster. I've done all full Korean rosters. Um, I've done all those types of rosters. And for me, going into this season, like no different. How do we make the most competitive team given where we're at and the resources we have? Obviously, we had a poor season with our all Korean roster. Um, and we released, you know, almost all of them um, from their contracts at the end of the season. Um, and so we wanted to start from kind of like a, a clean slate. Um, obviously, Yaki is a star player. And so we retained his services, um, you know, whether or not gives us gives us options moving forward, right? Like if it's not a direction um, that we thought he would be a part of, we would, you know, we'd look for another team. He has a lot of trade value. If he is part of that vision, great. You know, he's already on the team. Um, so that's why I retained Yaki and, you know, kind of dropped everyone else. Now, after that, working with the budget, just figure out, look at the global talent pool, see where you know, we can get the most bang for your buck. Generally, most bang for your buck is non-buyouts or, or regions where there's no buyouts because buyouts add a significant increase to the overall price and, you know, significantly impact your budget. Um, at least my budget includes buyouts. I don't know, maybe some other GMs, other orgs have, you know, separate, here's your salary budget, here's your buyout budget. Mine is all inclusive. It's up to me how I want to distribute that. Um, but, you know, just naturally, if there's no buyout, you can generally pay a player more or, you know, get more players um, for the same amount you'd spend salary wise with buyouts. So that's kind of I don't know if that answers all the points kind of started rambling there. But yeah, that's that's where we're at. How significant are like immigration costs for the lawyers for the visa in comparison to buyouts? Um, that's a good question. Uh, definitely not insignificant. I think visas probably cost anywhere from eight to ten k a player, like all in, um, and that's before you factor in, uh, before you factor in like the operational side where you have to fly them in, like how far are they flying, how how expensive is the flight, um, to and from the U.S. for us at least from the U.S. But other teams, you know, could be different. But yeah, yeah, I'd say those are the costs. How far along in the building process are you? Like at what stage? are you at the uh, uh, right now do you have already like everyone selected and now it's only down to contracts are you still trialing how many have you signed what's what's your general composition because we heard some general managers are going like doubling up on tanks or doubling up on dps or even supports for some of them so where are you with that so my strategy for roster building is to be fluid to make sure we understand have a short list don't eliminate anyone until we're sure like, obviously, we're going to have a number one option. We're going to have a number two option, we're going to have a number three option. But my thing is know what those options are. 
pursue them, you know, simultaneously without, you know, like don't offer somebody and like retract it. That's not what I mean. But like figure out what they want, what kind of salary they're looking for, and then kind of gather information, right? Information gather, then make the best decision you can based on all the information you have at the time. Um, and so that's how I approach it. So it's fluid. Um, some positions are solidified earlier than others. Obviously, you know, we signed Majed. His that position was solidified earlier than our other positions. We signed him. We pulled the trigger. Sometimes you pull the trigger and you decide that's the best move, right? Like you can lock down our number one option, you lock it down, or number two option, right? If your number one option's gone, your number two option's there, and you're like, okay, we're comfortable. Let's just pull the trigger on number two. You do that. Um, and I think for us, it's it's easier to convince players to join once you start having a core. It's pretty hard to convince a player to jump ship, or sorry, jump ship the wrong word, but to jump onto your team unless, uh, you know, you have a core. Or, like, if you have no core, they're like, oh, you're going to be the first ones. It's like, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, we're not sure what they're building there. Um, Depends on your level of trust of the player. Every situation is different, but generally I think it's harder to convince a player to join a blank slate team than it is once, you know, it starts getting fleshed down. They kind of understand the direction of the roster and they kind of have in their head a picture of, like, okay, how is this a good roster? Is this a roster I see myself on? Um, or do I have friends here? Stuff like that. For sure. Now, as you said, you guys signed Majet. And I think, like, not not everyone listening to this will be aware of what kind of player he, he is. You talked a little bit on Twitter about, like, the ping issues that he faced, but him still yeah. being, like, one of the clutch clutch guys and, like, high-performing ones in, in your trials, giving off a little bit of the fielder vibes from, like, um, last season. So... Can you talk a little bit about that, that decision and how you came to it? Yeah, so we saw him in trials. I knew going in, like, I'm very cognizant of, like, ping disadvantage. Um, so if, say, for example, we're doing a KR block and it's mostly Koreans, we'll have, you know, we'll try to lower ping for the majority of the trials as much as possible. Um, but then also factor in ping, like, when we look at people's performance and we're respecting them, understand, like, you know, they're paying, playing at a disadvantage and factor that in like, okay, maybe they would be slightly, you know, X percent better, you know, like, okay, they're great. They'll be insane on low ping, right? Majed was one of those players where I looked at him and I was like, I don't know many people that could do that. Not on to like 180 ping, 100 ping. Like he always plays, like we watch a lot of his stream because um, he streams a lot. So like we're, we're in there, we're watching VODs, we're assessing, like collecting as many data points as we can, information points as we can on players um, before we, you know, feel comfortable pulling a trigger. Um, in this case, like, we saw enough, like, we saw the trials, we're like, okay, we think this guy's the real deal. He can hit these shots at 200 ping. No doubt in our mind, he gets even better when we get him in the States and he's playing, you know, on lower latency in Al. Um, not that we're on land yet. Actually, I don't know. Maybe there are land events next year. That hasn't been announced yet. I have no clue. Um, but regardless, he'll, he's always played on 100 plus ping. He pings 100 to EU. He's like top of the ladder there for, you know, been top of the EU ladder for support for forever, right? Um, one of the top EU ranked players. Um, and so, yeah, we just, we got it. We felt like we had enough information to make a, you know, make a calculated decision and be like, hey, this is our guy. Did well in trials. Let's make an offer. You know, let's not wait to see if, you know, other, you know, other teams have interest or, or whatnot. Like, we're just going to pull the trigger and, and, you know, be comfortable with that decision. Right. Now, as you said, he came from the trial process. Can you illuminate a little bit like how that, that goes for you guys and how do you approach that? Sure. Um, I think we have a pretty novel, at least from what players have commented after they've done our trials um, process. So we've only trialed on Koth. We don't play another game mode. Okay. Um, some teams... Yes. So I, my, after talking, I've, I've been up to like 5 a.m. talking to Overwatch with Gumbo for like the past week. So I've just been living this. And then like we kind of formulated once after we signed, we immediately, I was like, look, we're late on the ball. Most Western teams, they're either through trials or like I'd say the big boys, like shock, right? Like they, they sign the big ticket items and then they're going to, you know, trial for whatever's left. Like they're fine with losing out on potential gems but they want to lock down, you know, the big ticket items first, right? Um, so most of, but there's been, I mean, you've seen all the open trials, right? There's also closed trials going on. I, would say I have more information in the public. I can say right now, 
most of the Western teams are were very advanced or like towards the end of their trial process. So I was like, Gumba, we need to get done. We need to get get through our trials as efficient as possible. Get as many data points as little time as possible. So like we have a week, I think. I think we have a week. We have a window where we can trial before players get start start being forced to make decisions. Because you can't expect a player to like just sit and wait on offers. Like assuming they have multiple offers or you know like people get snatched up. Um, so we had to move fast and we had to figure out an efficient way to do it. Um, and early on, I think he had the idea. He was like, I was like, he's like maybe we you know because he wanted to see mechanics because our philosophy was we need to see mechanics. Um, a lot of the game knowledge, we're not sure how much game knowledge gets transferred over to Overwatch 2, because the maps are different, The map, even the existing maps are reworked. Like, King's Row is a different map, right? Like, I don't know how many reworks. So, there, there's a wide range, like, so we wanted to know, we can coach the objectives. He was like, we can coach, I can coach the objectives, we can help them learn, like, game flow later, but what we need to know, like, since we're forced to trial right now, obviously we'd love, if we, you know, if all our teams were, like, made an agreement at, like, a, a pact where we will not sign any players for, you know, until January or until February, whenever we get access to Overwatch 2 beta. Obviously, we would not sign, like, that's the best thing for orgs, but it's kind of like a, you know, it's a rat race. It's an arms race. Once the first team decides, we're going to do open trials. We're, we're going to start trying. We're going to start signing players now. Everyone has to fall in line or else you just lose, right? You just lose out on talent. You don't have, you don't have time to wait. Um, so that's the situation we're in. Um, so when we're doing trials, uh, we looked at the game modes for Overwatch 2, and we were like, okay. So they added push, right? I believe that's what the game mode's called, push. I, ca- I think of it as tug of war. It seems like tug of war to me. But push, I believe, is what it's called. Um, and that's very deep. From just, we have a limited sample size, but from what we saw, it seemed very deathmatchy. Like, very similar to Koth, and where objectives super simple. It's, you know, and they just fight over the objective constantly. It's moving. That's the only difference. So we were like, okay. So two out of, you know, Two CP is gone, right? So two of the game modes is gonna be like deathmatch dependent or TDM dependent. What what wins out in those generally speaking? Mechanics, right? And so we're gonna focus on finding the most mechanically gifted players that you know from the trials. Like that was our goal. Um and so we just only did Koth. We're like, okay, we wanna see how you team fight, we wanna see your mechanics, we'd switch up the teams. Um I think the most interesting part is towards the end, like last map, we would make the tanks swap we would trial it's six v six because we were like we didn't want to make any assumptions on what's gonna be what it's gonna be like in five v five because I know there are teams that trial in five v five and have like I think there's a code that has like what you know the Overwatch two changes or the anticipate Overwatch two changes. We decided against that. We were just like also we get through more tanks. Instead of trialing one one tank against one tank, you get double the tanks and we have limited time. So we're like, okay, let's do six v six. Trial double the tanks and see what happens. Um and so the way we tested their hero pool was one of the maps we would have them offer. We're forced them to offer. Like, hey, if you're main tank, you're playing the off tanks this map. If you're an off tank, you're playing the main tank this map. Um, and so that's kind of how we tested. That's kind of how our trials went. So yeah, 66, all five Koth maps, you play all three maps, and then the game ends. Like we didn't, the game ends, and then uh, we also looked at stats. We had like a logger collecting stats during um, the trials that we would, we would also, so Make sure that we we discuss the players, figure out the eye test, what we think is the eye test, like the proper um, selections first, like who did best. Then we look at the stats to kind of verify or to verify like our assumptions. Um, and I think for the most part, our eye test was right, except in the case of like one or two, um, which is pretty good. Um, so that just like verifies the eye test, but also like the value in stats was like two people that maybe we didn't look at as closely because um, we... We can't be everywhere, right? There's 12 players trialing at the same time. We can't, we can, we can't look at their entire, like, scope. You know, their entire gameplay. We can, we don't have 12 coaches, right? Looking at each individual POV and giving us um, feedback on that. But if, like, if a discrepancy showed like showed up like that in the stats, we would then go back and do a deep dive on their POV because we had all the replay codes. So we would deep dive their POV, figure out, you know, what do we miss here? Like, do we miss something? Why were their stats significantly better than? you know, we thought they performed in the trial. Oh, so, shit. yeah, long answer, but I don't know if I missed anything, let me know. But that's kind of how our trial process went. 